Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the 7th module of our hands on machine learning course and this 7th module is all about building machine learning models from scratch. So far we have discussed about 4 models and the 5th model that we will be working on is a k nearest neighbor. So in this video let's try to understand what is the intuition behind a k nearest neighbor model and in the upcoming videos we will be discussing about what is the math behind it and how we can build a KNN model from scratch in Python. So let's get started. So first of all let's try to understand the basics of k nearest neighbor. So k nearest neighbor is an example of supervised learning model. So we know that machine learning is of two types. One is unsupervised learning and uh, another one is supervised learning. So when we talk about supervised learning we use labeled data set whereas when we uh, talk about unsupervised learning we mainly use unlabeled data set. Say for example uh, let's say that we want to create a model that can predict whether the image represents either dog or cat. When we use a supervised learning approach we will uh, you know feed the model with images of dogs and cat and we will tell the model that these images represent dogs and these images represent cats whereas in the case of unsupervised learning we just give the images of dogs and cats so the model just try to group uh, you know similar data points so this is how supervised and unsupervised learning works where the main difference is using labeled data whereas in the case of unsupervised learning we use unlabeled data so that is all about supervised learning and k nearest neighbors is an example of supervised learning model which requires labeled data set okay and the next point is it is used for both classification and regression. So again, when we talk about supervised learning, there are two tasks. One is classification and regression. So classification is when we want to classify the data points into categories, whereas regression is uh, about predicting certain numbers. Say, for example, let's say that we want to predict whether a person uh, gets a job or not based on their, uh, you know, educational qualification. So in that case, we are just, you know, predicting an yes or no question. So this is an example of a classification problem. And let's say that we are trying to predict what is the salary that a person is going to make so this is an example of a regression problem because we are trying to find some continuous numerical value so k nearest neighbors can be used for both classification and regression and that is one of the advantage of it and the third thing uh, and important aspect of k nearest neighbor is that it can be used for non-linear data so when we uh, so we have already discussed about linear regression logistic regression etc so those models work well on linear data linear data in the sense when uh, the you know data can be fitted to a straight line say for example if you uh, think about uh, predicting the salary of a person based on their work experience so both of these variables have a positive correlation between them so they have a linear relationship between them so if one value increases the other value uh, increases if one value decreases the other value also uh, you know decreases so that is called as linear data and uh, like logistic regression linear regression kind of models works well only on those linear data whereas k nearest neighbors can work well on non-linear data as well so i'll also explain you why uh, you know knn is uh, you know suitable for non-linear data in the later slides okay and the next thing about k nearest neighbor is that we have to define the k value okay so you know there are certain techniques that we can follow in order to determine this k value but uh, you know let's let's talk about it later so for now understand that it is a supervised learning model which can be used for both classification and regression and uh, one of the main aspect of knn is that it can be used to train with non-linear data and the final thing is that we have to assign some k value so now let's try to understand in more detail about how this knn works and uh, what is this k value and all those things okay so as i've told you earlier it can be used for both classification and regression so first of all let's take an example for a classification problem and try to understand knn and after that we will uh, you know uh, create a regression problem and see how knn works in that case so the first is uh, understanding how knn works for classification so let's say that uh, we have two data i mean we have two variables in a data set one is the loan amount and the another one is uh, the annual income so based on these values we have to predict whether a person will repay the loan on time or not okay so that is the problem statement so we have to determine whether the person is going to pay the loan on time so it is again an yes or no question which is an example of a classification problem let's say that this is the data point that we have so you know let's say that this particular data points has some value of some loan amount okay and this is the corresponding annual income and uh, similarly we have different data points here and this is the plot that we are getting so let us say that uh, all the green color data points represent people who didn't repay the loan on time whereas uh, blue color data points represent the people who repaid the loan on time so uh, we have two classes here one is this green colored class who didn't repay and blue colored class who repaid the loan on time okay so we can just try to you know look at this data and figure out what it basically tells so like if you see here so at this 
particular region the loan amount is quite less from year to year and and in this region the annual income of that particular person is also less so as we can see here in this region more people tend to repay their loan on time so we can say that if the loan amount is less and uh, if the person is making a decent annual income they are probably going to uh, you know repay the loan amount in case the loan amount is uh, very large even though they make a large uh, annual income so some people may tend to not repay the loan on time so this is what we can uh, generally you know get an understanding by looking at the data now what we need to do is we are going to uh, take a new data point so we are let's say that uh, there is another person who wants to get a loan from a bank and we are going to predict whether that person is going to repay the loan on time or not okay so this is the you know statement that we have the problem that we have to predict whether the person will pay the loan or not okay so before that we need to assign the k value let's say that i'm assigning the k value as 5 uh, i'll explain you what this signifies but just for now assume that the k value is 5 so this red colored point represents the new person the new data point for which we have to predict whether this person belongs to this green class or he belongs to the blue class in other words we are going to determine whether this person is going to repay the loan or loan on time or is not going to repay the loan on time so when we use a k nearest neighbor classification model what happens is like so it will first look at this k value and it will try to see how many nearest neighbors are there in each class so we have k is equal to 5 right so it will try to determine five nearest data points to the new data point so we have to just uh, look at this data and see how many like not how many like five data points that are closer to this red point okay so if i draw a boundary like this we can see here so we have three data points which belong to the green colored uh, data points and two data points which belong to this blue color data point so we know that uh, green represents uh, people don't repay and blue color represents the people who repay on time so it will try to take this and see which class is more so uh, if k is equal to, if k is given as 7 it will try to find you know seven data points that is close to this red color data point so it will try to see which class as uh, you know majority of neighbors to this uh, red color data point so if you see here so green color data points are majority in this case right so we have three uh, uh, green color data points here whereas we have only two color data points here so hence we can say that this person may not repay the loan on time so this is how this k nearest neighbor works so this is how it will try to predict uh, predict a classification problem where it will try to uh, check some nearest neighbors here the ne number of nearest neighbor we are taking is 5 so it will look for five data points closest to that new data point okay so this is how this works and uh, and the main thing about k nearest neighbor is that it will try to find the distance between the data points so it will not try to draw this boundary so here i have mentioned this boundary in order to show you visually you know which data points are closer but in real uh, in, in reality what happens is the k nearest neighbor will try to find the distance of the new data point with all these uh, five data points so it will try to find what is the distance between this point and this red colored point and this again this red point and this uh, green colored point and so on so it will try to find the distance and and uh, give us the five nearest neighbor okay so this is how it works and this distance is mainly calculated using two distances one is euclidean distance and the another one is man and distance so there are actually formulas in order to calculate these distances so apart from this there are also you know two other distances but the widely used distance measures are euclidean distance and manhattan distance okay so this is how k nearest neighbor works so the one thing that you need to note here is compared to other models the training is completely different in the case of a k nearest neighbors so we are we are not you know trying to learn from the entire data set but the model will try to Uh, plot the new data point here and it will try to find which data points are closer to this so you can think about k nearest neighbor as a regional model with which uh, tries to look at a particular region surrounding that new data points okay so this is how k nearest neighbor works for for classification so you can think about like it will try to plot the data points and when when a new data point arrives it will try to plot it again and try to see which class of data points are uh, you know closer to it so if you have k is equal to 3 it will try to uh, take three nearest neighbors and uh, the which class is majority and it will uh, predict that this new data point belongs to that class so in this class so green color data points are majority so it will tell us it is an example of this kind of data which basically represents people who don't repay on time so this is how k nearest neighbors works for classification problem so if you remember i told you that uh, this works well on linear data right so the reason is that it doesn't care what is the overall trend is so if you see here it doesn't care what the data point looks like 
no looks like in this uh, region it doesn't care what the data points look like in this particular region so it doesn't it doesn't need a trend to uh, you know to make its prediction so it, it just looks at particular region in which the new data point uh, located so it, it it is you know it works well when we have non linear data set as well so we don't need a linear data where there is a linear relationship between the two variables so that is one interesting fact about k nearest neighbor that you need to remember okay so whenever you are having a non linear data you can go with a k nearest neighbor classifier okay and the other thing that you need to remember is that the k value should be odd value so if you have even value so what happens is like uh, if you have three green color data points and three blue color data points the model cannot decide uh, you know uh, to which class this new data point belongs to so you should have a k value as 5 so that the model can make that decision when there are you know uh, closely you know close number of values for both the classes so that is uh, the main things about k nearest neighbor when we use for classification problem and regression also works pretty uh, you know similar to this so let's say that we want to calculate uh, the salary of a person based on their work experience let's say this is the data set that we have and we the plot is like this so you can see there is a linear trend in this data set because we know that the salary of the person will increase if their work experience increases right so we get a linear plot like this and again, we want to determine what is the salary this person is going to make. So these are all the training data that we have. And this is the new data point for which we need to predict. Again, uh, you know, we need to give the K value. So let's say that we again, we are giving the K value as five and it will try to look for five data points that lie very close to this red color data point. Okay, so let's say that these are the five data points. Now the model will try to take the mean of all these five data points. So it will uh, try to take the mean salary of all these five data points and that will be uh, the salary of the person represented as this uh, red colored point. Okay, so salary of the person can be calculated as the mean of five nearest neighbors. Five nearest neighbor is nothing but the five data points that lie close to that new data point. Okay, so this is how k nearest neighbor works for regression problem. So and uh, again, as I have told you, the main aspect here is calculating that distance. So we, uh, you know, need to incorporate that formula so to our model so that it can determine which data points lies closer to our test data point. So you know, we can consider this red color data point as a test data point for which we are predicting. So this is how k nearest neighbor works uh, for classification and regression problem. And uh, finally, let's uh, discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of k nearest neighbors. And once you understand these advantages, you can, uh, you know choose the model let's say that uh, so you are in a situation where you you are not sure which model to use so you have to look at the data set and uh, you you have to look at the nature of the data set and decide uh, which model you are going to work with so this advantages and disadvantages will help us in in the process of model selection okay so to determine which model to use in which case so the first advantage in k nearest neighbor is that it works well with a smaller data set with less number of features so this is one of the important things so it is not good uh, when the data set is very large and when when it has uh, i dimensions i dimension in the sense when it there are a lot of input features so the data set uh, should be smaller and the number of features should be less so in that case you can uh, definitely use a k nearest neighbor uh, model and as i've told you uh, it can be used for both classification and regression problem whereas if you take logistic regression model it cannot be used for regression as it is mainly built for classification problem so in this case knn can be used for both classification and regression and that is one of the advantage of it and uh, the third advantage is that it is easy to implement for multi-class classification problem so multi-class classification is when we have uh, multiple classes so binary classification is when we want to uh, you know predict uh, between two classes as i have told you whether we are going to you know predict whether a person is going to get a job or not so in this we have two classes so this is an example of a multi-class classification so let's consider another example where uh, we we uh, you know give the images of a different colored balls to the model and we want our model to predict what that particular color is so it can be red or it can be green or it can be any color so in this case we have multiple colors and the number of classes we have is more than two so those examples are called as multiple sorry multi-class classification and in that cases we can uh, use k nearest neighbors whereas uh, for the other models like uh, logistic regression and when we have uh, you know subprotected machines and all this uh, you know we have to tweak that model so there is uh, you know more work to do in that case when we have a multi-class classification problem and uh, the fourth advantage is that we 
have this different distance criteria okay as i've told you we can use uh, the distance measure like euclidean distance and manhattan distance and all those things and apart from this there are also you know two other uh, distances so you know amming distance and another uh, distance something like that so this is another advantage so it is very flexible to work with so these are all the four main advantage when we talk about k nearest neighbor and uh, if we talk about disadvantage so we have to choose the optimum k value so choosing the right k value can break or make your model so there are techniques uh, to determine uh, this optimum k value so we will discuss about that uh, in the later videos so this is one main disadvantage so if you don't uh, give a proper k value then the model may not work fine okay so that is one disadvantage and uh, it is less efficient with i dimensional data so it is corresponding to this first advantage so when the data has uh, many input features so we call it as i dimensional data and k nearest neighbor doesn't work well when the uh, data has i dimensions and uh, it doesn't work perform well on imbalanced data set so imbalanced data set when is is the one where the distribution of classes is you know uh, very different so let's say that we want to uh, you know uh, use a model to predict whether the image represents dog or cat let's say that this data set contains 1000 images of dog and uh, only you know 200 or 300 images of cat so in this case we can say that the data points are very large for dog images and very small for you know uh, the cat images so this is called as imbalanced data set where, where uh, one class of data points has higher number of uh, data points whereas the other class have very low number of data points so knn doesn't work well on imbalanced data set so we need to solve the problem of imbalanced data set before using it and the other disadvantage is that it is very sensitive to outliers so when we have outliers we cannot rely on k nearest neighbor model so whereas when we think about a random forest classifier it, it works you know well even though you have outliers in your data so uh, you know like uh, models like k like a random forest regressor are insensitive to outliers whereas KNN is very sensitive to outliers so these are the advantages and disadvantages so main thing is that you should have a smaller data set and less number of features if you want an efficient k nearest neighbor model and again it can be used for both classification and regression and uh, it is easy to implement for multi-class classifications and uh, we have different uh, distance measures like Euclidean and Manhattan distance and when we talk about disadvantages uh, the disadvantage is choosing the optimum k value and uh, when we have i dimensional data we cannot use KNN properly and uh, we cannot use the model when the data set is imbalanced and when we have a lot of outliers in this data set so this is all about the intuition of k nearest neighbors and uh, the advantages and disadvantages of this particular model so in the upcoming videos we will, we will be discussing the math behind it and how we will uh, you know how we can implement this model from scratch in python okay so we will mainly deal with the classification aspect of k nearest neighbor and if time permits we can move on to the regression part as well okay so that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching